Today we're going to try to solve this equation here, cosine of x equals i, where i is the square root of negative 1, the imaginary unit. And does it even make sense, cosine of an angle equals the square root of negative 1? Isn't this counterintuitive? Yes, it is, but we're going to solve it in a cool way. Okay, so how can we solve this crazy equation here? Well, firstly, we can rewrite uh, our cosine of x in terms of exponentials. And by that, I mean we need the famous Euler's formula, e to the i x equals cosine of x plus i times sine of x. And uh, yes, we can just move i sine of x to the other side and get what cosine of x is. But this is not what we're going to do because we don't want this sine of x here. We have to write the same formula, but instead of i x, e to the minus i x. So we could think of it as the conjugate of this complex number here or uh, e to the i of minus x. So cosine of minus x is obviously cosine of x plus i sine of minus x. And the sine of minus x is minus sine of x. So we have to put a minus here, i sine of x. Now, Notice that if we sum these two equations, we get rid of i sine of x because i sine of x minus i sine of x equals zero, whereas we get two cosine x. So let's do it. e to the i x plus e to the minus i x equals two cosine x. Now we can just divide the, both members by 2, and in doing so, we get rid of these two here, and we get a nice formula for our cosine of x. So cosine of x equals e to the i x plus e to the minus i x, all divided by 2. Now, why is this important? Because now we can replace this cosine of x here into this equation. So I've cleaned the blackboard so everything is clear. All right, we can rewrite our equation. So instead of cosine x, we have to put e to the i x plus e to the minus i x all divided by two equals i. And uh, now we have to solve this equation because these two equations are the same. Uh, how can we solve it? Well, firstly, let's multiply the members by 2. This is easy. And we obviously get 2 and 2 cancels out. So we may, let me rewrite the equation here e to the i x plus e to the minus i x equals. Sorry, let me write this equal sign be in a better way uh, to i. Okay, it might seem tricky, but now to simplify everything, let's just make a substitution. So I would say t equals e to the i x. Uh, in this way, without having to write every time e to the i x, we can simply put t instead of it and just something to you know, keep things simple and uh, better. So we get t plus e to the minus x is 1 over t, t to the minus 1, and this equals 2i. Now let's move here and we can just add this t plus 1 over t and we get t squared plus 1 over t equals 2i. Now we can multiply both sides by t and and obviously t cannot be equal to 0 but cosine of 0 is 1 and 1 is definitely different from i so we kind of allowed to do this. We can cancel this t and this t here and we have our equation t squared plus 1 equals 
to IT and we can bring everything to the first member so t squared minus 2it plus 1 equals 0 and even though it might sound weird because we have this i here this is actually a quadratic equation so how can we solve it for t well we need our simple quadratic formula so let's try to solve this equation for t we know that t equals minus b so in this case b the second term is 2i plus or minus the square root of 2i squared but remember that 2i all squared equals 4 times i squared but i is the square root of minus 1 so i squared equals minus 1 and this equals minus 4 so this is minus 4 let me write this for better minus 4 times uh no sorry minus 4 times 1 times 1 so 4 times 1 times 1 and this is 4 all divided by 2 so what can we do here we have this 2i plus or minus the square root of minus 4 minus 4 is minus 8 but uh, the square root of minus 8 we know that 8 equals 2 so let me write it here a equals 2 cubed so the square root of 2 cubed is 2 times the square root of 2 but we have a minus sign so we need to put an i so this is basically 2 times the square root of 2 times i and notice this i is not under the square root sign it's outside the square root sign so keep that in mind all divided by 2 and this equals to well we can simplify these twos here and we left with i we have a common factor of i so we can bring it outside so that we have i times 1 plus or minus this square root of 2 okay, now that we have t we need to find x okay guys this is our t and uh, remember that t equals e to the i x so we know that e to the i x equals i times 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 now how can we find x well we could just apply the natural log on both sides and notice that this is not the usual natural log because we have complex numbers so we're talking about complex functions but it works the same as our natural log function so we can just bring the exponent so i x in front of e and the natural log of e is 1 so we have that i x equals to the natural log of this number here i that multiplies 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 and uh, yes we could find x to bring y to the other side so we need to do divide both members by i that is the same as multiplying by 1 over i but remember that okay so firstly let me cancel out these two i's but 1 over i is the same as minus y because we can multiply by i over i that is obviously 1 we can cancel out uh, now we get high here i squared in the denominator and i squared is minus one so this is minus i and we know that x equals minus i times the natural log of i times one plus or minus the square root of two but this is a product here i times one plus or minus the square root of two so we can split it into natural logs into two natural logs so x equals minus i that multiplies the natural log of i plus the natural log of one plus or minus the square root of two 
Now the question is, what is the Nash log of i? And, well, the Nash log of i equals to, so the Nash log of i equals to i times pi over 2. So we get that x equals minus i times the Nash log of y is minus i squared pi over 2. So pi over 2 minus i times the Nash log of 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 and this is our final answer so this is basically the cosine of x that satisfies the equation cosine of x equals y so this is the x our cosine of i this is the inverse cosine of i how cool is this if you enjoyed this video leave a thumbs up share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe to my channel and as always thanks for watching